praise the Lord, mightiest prophet of the Lord. Amen. Pastor Sophie Wachie, the Lord has spoken with me. I want your listeners to know that the Lord has spoken with me uh, this past night. And uh, there is a continuing conversation the Lord is having with me about the mission of the Lord in Australia. And uh, I see yesterday, uh, I see that the Lord takes me to that meeting. And at uh, that meeting, there is a healing service. And just as the Lord brings his servant right into the meeting like this, at the healing service, uh, there is a lady, uh, there's a girl, I think she's maybe, I don't know how old she is, but probably, I hope it's a girl, not a slim woman. Yes, yeah, so I see a woman that's wearing a flower with flowers, a cloth with flowers. If she's a girl, she's going to be around uh, probably 13, 14, 15, like this. Or maybe she is a woman that has been ailing because I see that she is not able to walk. She's lying there. But uh, immediately the Lord brings me. She, the, the cloth is flowers. I see a bit of flowers. I see some colors there, like light blue and uh, mixed other colors. But as the Lord brings me into the meeting, the healing service, uh, all of a sudden, the Lord touches and she gets up and she walks. So that was very stunning, a very mighty, a very mighty moment uh, in that meeting. I don't know whether it's in in uh, Perth, Australia, or it is in uh, in Sydney. It looks to me more it is in Perth, as though it is something happening in Perth, Australia. And then at the same time, when she gets up, a crippled boy also gets up and walks. I think a little boy, I don't know how old this boy is, probably five or six, seven, like this, gets up and walks. And I see as if it was a crutch. There's something the boy was wearing. And the boy begins now to walk. I don't know the limping, it was beginning to walk as though limping a bit, but was not walking before. And uh, the day before yesterday, the Lord again showed me tremendous healing anointing that will come there and visit that place and heal the people, and also heal the church, heal the condition of the church. Remember, it's both physical and spiritual healing that all these things point towards the glorious coming of the Messiah. And uh, in yesterday's uh, conversation with the Lord, when he took me to Australia, uh, I see very clearly that at the healing service, at the healing service now, Yes, now at the healing service, uh, when that uh, that uh, woman gets up and uh, the crippled, the boy that was, I don't know whether crippled or lame on one leg, I think one leg is crippled. Finally, the Lord touches that leg and they walk. Then uh, I see the servant of the Lord. I see myself asking, where are the others? Where are the other people that need healing? Where are they going to? Where are they? You see? And then after that, I see as if people are around him, they surround him at the healing service there. They are mesmerized at this moment. And then I see the servant of the Lord squat down and cry for the church. I see him cry and weep a lot of tears. The Lord made me weep very bitterly, very, very bitterly. And they said, look, look now. Look at this anointing here. Look, when the Lord just brought me just my presence, when my presence just entered the door like this, the healing anointing raised that woman and raised this crippled boy, this lame or crippled, whatever the case be, raised this crippled boy, raised that woman that was bedridden. You people, you must now believe. You must now believe that the Messiah is coming. And I begin to weep very bitterly there for the condition of the church in Australia and to cry unto them to prepare the way, to, to, to give up the pursuit for the things of the world. So this is the event I'm seeing. And I saw another meeting earlier, the conference that takes place in Perth, Australia. Again, I think it's Perth, Australia. And I see that many people have come. They have already come for the conference, many, many, many pastors. And uh, for some reason, I come late. And so I come late. So I know that the Lord is asking me to arrange my schedule in that way, because many pastors come, but I don't know whether it was flight or whatever reason, I come late. So, 
that, that is the adjustment we are doing now. The Lord is saying that right now he is speaking about Australia, and the Lord intends to revive the church in Australia to bring an awakening to that land. Australians are Christians that love the Lord. Australia is a Christian nation. They love the Lord so much. So this is, this is going to be a very important moment, a refreshing time for the church in Australia. And again, the Lord has raised the same pertinent issues. The Lord has spoken about sexual immorality in the church, the postmodernism you see in the church, the gospel of prosperity that says you can bribe God here and get away. You can get away with righteousness, get away with holiness, get away with right standing with God, get away with fear of God, get away with reverence unto Jehovah. He's saying time is out for that gospel of prosperity. And now as he sends me to Australia, there is going to be a greater need for the clergy, for the pulpit, to hearken unto the message of righteousness and the return to holiness that Australia will now receive. And he's saying that that is the gateway to the end revival. That is the door that leads the church in Australia and the nation of Australia to the end revival that prepares for the beautiful, glorious coming of the Messiah. Now, that this revival is beautiful, no one can gain say on that, you know. This revival is so beautiful. They have seen what's happening in Kenya. We are right now handling a very powerful revival in this country. All this time, I had set apart uh, about, uh, I said, for more than a year, I'm not going to do a healing service in this country. Probably we were looking at December, December 31st, 2018, or some mid or spring, spring 2019. That's what I'd said for Kenya when we would do again, the Lord would send me to do another healing service, a revival. But look now what the Lord has done meanwhile in the interim, right from home, right from where his servant is, where the man of God is right now without going to the healing service. You see the many cripples that walked in the land on the other day, you see the cripple that walked in Finland at, in a city, Porvo. You see now the resurrection of Mama Rosa. And just today I was going through all the records of the doctor, the senior most doctor that is actually documenting the resurrection, the stepwise reversal of death. Uh, the senior most doctor, the deputy director of medical services in this land, Dr. Zachary Katsipoi, also senior consultant surgeon and professor of medicine at the Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital. I was going through his documentation and the recordings he recorded and the observations since he certified uh, the death and resurrection of Mama Rosa and following her very keenly, step by step, how she's doing on a daily basis, the progress she's making. I was going through that today. And you see that Kenya has a beautiful revival that Australia does not want to miss. No nation really wants to miss this revival. Because somewhere you hear the doctor saying that this dead body here, this corpse was rotting. Then when, we, when he's asked again, you mean this corpse was rotting? He says, this was a rotten corpse, rotten. The intestines and stomach, the, the, it was rotten. This was a rotten corpse, that a rotten dead body that the Lord used his mightiest prophet to resurrect. So that is a powerful revival in the church. That is a tremendous land, landmark in the history of the church. That is now the changing of the worship experience in the church. That means the Lord has now raised the church, raised the Christian worship, the Christianity followers of Christ. The religion we profess and confess, salvation in Christ Jesus, the Lord has used this resurrection now to establish that there is no other God in the whole face of the earth and in the entire universe except Jehovah, the God of Israel. And I remember very well when the Lord was calling me way back and his hand came and wrote he wrote on the wall Isaiah 43 verse 11 and verse 1. 
And you see very clearly that Isaiah 43, verse 11, he was introducing himself. That's why he arranged them as Isaiah 43, verse 11, and verse 1. When he came to call me, he walked in, he walked into my bedroom, and he wrote on the wall, and he covered it with transparent plexiplastic. Isaiah 43, verses 11, and verse 1, in that order. And when you look at verse 11, you see Jehovah introducing himself to me when he came to call me. Verse 1, then now he is the calling. He is bringing the calling. He say, now he who created you, O Israel, he who formed you, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, I have called you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. So that is the calling. However, Isaiah 43 verse 11 that you begin with, you see and hear him say, I, even I, am the Lord. And apart from me, there is no Savior. And there is no other time in the history now of the church, the modern church, when this scripture here has now come true. Because only Jehovah is the Savior. Only Jehovah can save people from death can save us from hell, from eternal death. Only Jehovah is God. I, even I, am the Lord. And apart from me, there is no Savior. Meaning all the other gods are now idol gods, not worthy to be worshipped. That is what the resurrection of Mama Rosa has resonated to the ends of the earth, even Australia, New Zealand, and the islands of the earth, to the ends of China and South Korea, all the way to Alaska, to North America, Canada, Central, South, Islands, Africa, everywhere, Europe. The Lord is saying that this is the moment now when revival is sweetest. Revival in the church is most powerful. Establishing the church, establishing the authority of the church, establishing the authority of the pulpit, the authority of the Christian believer. This is the hour at which the Christians lift up their heads walk with raised heads up and go and proclaim the gospel of Jesus and tell the dying world that there is no other name by which man can be saved from death except the glorious name of Jesus. The Lord has now established the church in the eyes of the nations of the earth at this hour as we speak. And that's why the Lord is speaking to me about Australia at a very interesting time when all about the heavenly emissary, the heavenly envoy, the heavenly delegation to the earth, to the church, is about revival, sweet revival, mighty revival, glorious revival, holy revival, preparing the way, doing the grand finale, finalizing, winding down the things on the earth, and preparing for the glorious coming of the Messiah. And that's why at this moment, the Lord has presented an opportunity for Australia also to be able now to receive, to be able now to get a chance to join this massive wave, the wave that is renewing the church, that is reestablishing holiness in the house, that is rebuilding the worship that Jesus surrendered to us on the cross. So Australia prepare the way the Messiah is coming. But this is far beyond Australia. There are many nations across the earth also. Many nations longing for this revival. The opportunity is the same. So may the Lord bless you. Jesus the Messiah is coming. Shalom. Mm-hmm.